welcome back to my channel. My name is May, and you're watching Event to May. In today's video, I'd like to talk about a topic I've been really excited to talk to you about. It's like in the whole theme of black identity um, in white spaces, but also black living in white spaces. As some of you might know, I love to talk about decolonization, black identity, black consciousness, human consciousness. I like to be curious about life because I feel like a curious life where you ask enough questions at least helps you to be better at living a life that makes sense to you. Your life might not make sense to everybody, but I think the worst way you can live life is a life that doesn't even make sense to you, you're just living it because that's the template you've been given. And I like to reflect on a lot of things with that approach, like for me, how can this make more sense to me and where I want to go in life. Um, something I really love to work towards is becoming a great ancestor. I learned that idea from somebody called, I think it's Lydia Saeed, I'll put her information here so you guys can check her out as well. Um, and I like the idea of actively living your life now to know that it's going to affect the next generation and I like that idea because it also connects to the generations before us and how that has affected our life where we currently are. So it's also the things I kind of love to work with also within my own holistic healing facilitation um, or talks. Um, this year I'm challenging myself to give more talks. I am actually giving more talks like I've given some already. These are the things I'm going to talk more about also about when I do start speaking more um, in the speaking arrangements, I speaking opportunities I am putting in plan and some I've been invited to as well because I know it matters. I think having a holistic perspective of healing and trauma and oppression are very important. Like when you go um, to understand yourself, it doesn't just stop with you. It starts with your mother and father, it starts with your grandparents, it starts with the context of existence you live in. I never think that people are just a bubble by themselves, but we are connected to in a circular kind of spiral way to the past and the present and the future. And by being aware of these moving parts, we can actually change how we mold our own future. And being a good ancestor is also that for me is taking responsibility for this little section of life I'm playing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so when it comes to black loving in white countries, as you guys know, I live in a little country in Scandinavia called Denmark. I was raised here. I've lived here most of my life, more than I've lived anywhere else in the world. So it has shaped a lot of my reality. It's also here I became more self-aware. It's here I learned about social issues. It's here not because of my environment, but because I was living here and I became aware that things didn't make sense in some settings and I became curious about things and I always felt like even in school when we learned about things there was always parts missing and I know those parts were missing because obviously this is a dominantly white society which has a dominantly white perspective. Yeah so living here and growing up here where like I said I'd go to class, I'd go to schools and I'd often be the only black person and this of course affects how you also relate to your love life. I would say, like I talked about in my Black Love series, the black love for me is not something that's only romantic. It has to go beyond that. If we are to have any realistic, healthy form of black love, it has to go beyond romantic. It has to be brotherly, sisterly, communal. It has to be, um, um, what you national. It has to be something that grounds us bigger than just romantic love. Even though that is an important component of black love, it's not the only component of black love and we need bigger, stronger systems of black love in order to sustain good romantic black love. So when it comes to that, I also take into account like being me and my family being a single black unit like put in a society where the majority of people didn't look like us and not having a strong network of a black community and going to schools when we didn't have networks or connections to other black people. I remember also I shared this like me and my friends would talk about it um, about how even like walking past a black person on the street felt so awkward or in any set setting it's because you were aware of each other but it wasn't this comfortable awareness of hey brother I see you or hey sister I see you especially the people who were raised here it's different with people who had just recently come to Denmark I always feel like they were always more open they were always more welcoming but I feel like if people had grown up here long enough 
they kind of there was a sort of like oh you're black i'm black let's not pretend to see each other <laughs> which was weird and i always was fascinated by that i remember when we were in amsterdam with Daina and we went to this um we were at this place that sells black dolls in Amsterdam. I'll put maybe a little Instagram there so you guys can check it out because what they're doing there is amazing. And the guy told me that that was the same thing there, that the black community was very estranged to each other and success was almost measured to how much but how much you could over integrate into white societies and of course all of this comes back to romantic black love or communal black love that when we are isolated in white communities because maybe we think there are no options of course there are places where you are isolated because your people are simply not there but in the digital age i also think that that's something that i found refuge in that even though around me i didn't have a lot of people who look like me or a lot of people who understood my experiences when the internet started booming especially social media especially like being able to watch people's videos online that's why i love doing this because even though there's so many voices now it doesn't mean that everybody will have a similar perspective or approach to life as you and it's great that when you share that you have people who can connect with your experience so when i was growing up that was just the beginning of that and i remember starting to do videos and watching videos on, on youtube like almost a decade ago and i was like so fascinated by this world that opened up and then you could also stream videos like you could stream on movies online um, back then I didn't even know it was illegal like I was just like oh like I this is a movie by people like even that idea some people take it for granted today but I didn't grow up in a world where that was the norm I think the only black movies we would see was you know like my mom sometimes she would have like um, CDs of Nigerian movies and she'll bring them back from Uganda and that would be in movies like a full cast of black people to see like other cinema like um, when I saw the color purple when I saw so, um, what were all these movies like Friday? When I saw all these movies where the narrative was about black lives and it was focused on when I when I found the series like Living Single, that was so amazing for me. Like all these things matter because they gave me a different perspective of black love. And for me, black love starts with yourself. Like how can you not? How can you love anybody black if you don't even love your own blackness? If you don't even accept your own blackness? If you're not also aware of your own anti-blackness and healing that? So being able to see a reflection of me of blackness and a reflection that. I loved reading black books and these things weren't offered to me by the dominant society it was something things I had to you know find and I when the internet opened up <laughs> like that was something like I went crazy and I was finding all of this stuff I was reading books I was watching talks of like um Henry John Clark I was watching talks from people like Maya Angelou I was like oh my god like because before that on national TV what we had was Oprah I think that was as black of everyday interaction on TV we would get was Oprah and then there'll also be some Danny show where there was this black mixed woman and there was a black news anchor <laughs> on a TV news channel and that was it like that those were like my black interaction from the Danny society so seeing other black people embracing being black on a new level like I was born black but like to embrace being black is like almost like when people get baptized like not baptized confirmation I don't know if you guys do it I think it's part of the Catholic Church I don't know like when you are older like when you're young you get baptized I'm not religious but I just like want to use this analogy when you're young you're baptized into the faith but then when you're like 15 14 you have to confirm your faith I feel like my black awakening was the reconfirming of my blackness in the sense of like a positive approach to being black and awareness that hey I am black and taking that on in a sense of I am different and that that's great and that's okay and that people like me who are different and they're doing great things and if they can do that I can do that too so black love for me then evolved from there because once you can establish that then when I started thinking about my own dating life and for me I think I talked about it a bit in makes people being included in black love where I think I shared a little bit about obviously growing up in a predominantly white society where the majority of people are white men and those are and you're watching all these movies with white characters and everything is 
laced with white is better and even maybe not in white better what is the only so what is the only way that you can match you with romance with music with everything you kind of start thinking because i do believe that of the power of of obviously obviously visualization and representation that says if you see that from a young age and that you're watching Titanic, the notebook, all that stuff, there's no way you can grow up and then say, oh but yeah, I'm gonna just choose the black man randomly. And not only okay, let's say you do have that awareness and you're like, oh but I still want to love somebody who's like me. Um where are you gonna find them? <laughs> because the majority of people around you don't look like you. And of course now there's internet dating and I used to live in a smaller town village when I was growing up and now I live in a bigger city like Copenhagen where there's more black people and also we're just flights away from other cities so you meet more black people and now I feel like the awareness in the black community is growing and it's growing positively. There is events, there is arrangements, there is um, collaborations that is just, it's a beautiful time to be black in Denmark and I am enjoying it. I'm enjoying all the people I'm meeting, I'm enjoying all the things that are being um, planted here for the black community. So there's all these things that now I feel like, okay, I can meet people who are not only black, you won't just meet a black male, but the chances that he's also aware and conscious and also hopefully has worked on his own black issues enough to be like, yo, okay, we live in a country where white is good, white is better, but I, and not even but, is it a but there or an and? and i would like to choose you as my partner and of course some people say but love is love like don't worry about color and i think that people enjoy saying that a lot to minorities which is funny because most people it's a norm not to minorities but it's something that um i feel like most people in races it's almost a norm that they choose each other but black people, especially in white spaces, have to fight to choose each other because everything is working against that love. Like the society is working against that love by showing that love in somebody else is better. And if you see a black person, a white person, they're usually a black person on screen, they're usually going to be in an interracial relationship. Again, the idea that two black people, maybe even in a white society, let's say there was a movie with, with a black couple and there were white people around them, like that movie isn't worthy of seeing that story, isn't worthy of being told. So obviously the idea then is two black people together makes the love irrelevant and it's only relevant if there is a white person intersected into that. Going through all these things and being aware of that and broadening my horizon, like traveling more, working on my own, like I said, into blackness, and also the way I felt about black men because also it's growing up, obviously I don't blame my, my fellow young black men growing up here because the men have a different experience than the women. I think we are both equally fetishized on in different ways. Um, but then like, there's this idea of course that black men are so cool and they're so, you know, it's like the whole Kardashian <laughs> mental thing about that I would say the society has here about black guys, right? So they want a black man, they want to be with a black, they might even not like black people, black women, but they want to be with a black man because they also want to produce black babies. And there's this whole fetishization of blackness in that sense. And the same with the women, which often also you see them in, um, portrayed in ways that are degrading or over-sexualized, hypersexualized in the sense of like, even the idea that we have a street here in Copenhagen where there is a lot of um, African, women that are prostitutes that work as prostitutes here of course there's the whole question about if they're trafficked if it's um, um what you call trafficked sex labor sex la <laughs> labor yes in denmark that happens too so there's all these cases around that as well and for other men to see you and because they can pay for other black women to have sex with them or black women that come here for cards 
or to get like to secure their life which that's a whole other story how people come here to secure their life and to find peace somewhere else and I always find that interesting how in Western countries they're so against people wanting to immigrate for better lives at the same time they are so quick to destabilize countries that these people come from or fun ways that destabilize the countries that they come from so it's kind of like what do you want you want to both destroy the place we come from and make sure we just stay there anyway that's another story um, but obviously ideally I would like our countries to be secure and, he and healthy enough for us, for us to travel just for a year and not to travel because we can't find peace in our own homes like nobody wants to live their own home freely I think most of the people who do that are because they need help they need to be feel secure somewhere else anyway all that to say my journey through it's been everywhere but i'm like i'm trying like to just share my experience here and i hope you guys can relate to that that obviously then living through that and finally um i dated my first proper black grown up and that was a great experience that was with my Taina, who is mixed with afro-brazilian and arabic heritage um so my experience with black love and also like living there that taught me another way of black love through community and the way people help each other the way people support each other the way also traumas passed you know like along each other like there's all these things that you see when you realize okay the context that we as black people live in and the context in which black love can grow in grow from or even be what do you call or the all love can be stunned in. So I think when it comes to where I am now, I feel like black love for me, like I say, because I am in a community now and I'm a part of more things that are black and Afro centered and just finding a sense of home has created, like I say, like just being happy with knowing who you are loving who you are makes you work walk in this world a different way i think when you spend so much time trying to fit in and trying to not look so different trying to be just another um white friendly black person um it creates a sort of like um what do you call it it's a sense of living in repression, but not only repression, but you're constantly living in denial of who you are. And even though that might be subconscious and to accept and understand yourself and understand the context you live in and to have love for that blackness and that black experience, wherever that might be, you move in the world differently. You move in your white circles differently. You move in um, black circles differently. You accept and reject things differently because you are more grounded and i felt like maybe before all of that before that black love for me i wasn't as grounded and that creates a lot of issues mentally spiritually and that we don't always think about that we don't always um talk about and i think we don't talk about them because like i said a lot of trauma traumatic ways that we live in are very normalized they're almost culturalized it's a way of saying well that's the way the world is but it's not healthy for us it's not healthy for our progression for our empowerment for our sovereignty and i think for us to be aware of all those things uh, is the first step to us living here and loving each other loving ourselves and building communities with bases on love bases um, of respect and honor and appreciation and pride and i'm just happy that my journey has led me to here and i'm just excited about all the things blooming uh black and blooming <laughs> in my settings and around the world i really do believe that we are living in a in a second wave of black renaissance um on a global scale because of the digital media because of digital media i think that there is an awakening of the black identity and the re-identification of the black identity and the reclaiming of the black identity on another level that is more diversified it's more accepting it's more empowering and it's more loved and present and i am all here for it so 
that's all I wanted to share with you guys. I really enjoyed making these videos and I hope that you guys get some connection from them and you learn something from them. And as always, I love to hear your feedback as well and your experience with your reflections. And otherwise, as I always say, be kind, but obviously don't take any shit. <laughs> and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Bye. Sana yo ke yo ke into egio Ah kana male ko rotana yo